Selata Fishing Jetty Village is also known as Singapore Island's last fishing village nestled in the northeastern coastal area of Singapore, at the estuary of Selata River right outside the Ishuan Dam which made up of the formal Selata River. Its exact location is at the mangrove area between Ishuan Avenue 1 and Pulau Punggol Barak. Please note that this fisherman jetty is within a private property and therefore not accessible to the public. There is a security guard guarding the jetty entrance around the clock. Only the boat owners, fishermen, their friends, and regular customers, fishmongers, have exclusive access to the fishing jetty. While this tiny stilt village seems to be preserved in a time capsule, its surrounding was heavily developed such as Selata Aerospace Park, Selata Airport, Rowers Bay Park, etc. There are several huts located along the coastal shore, and each has its own wooden boardwalk or often called fisherman's jetty stretched into the open waters. This fishing village is said to be owned by an old Chinese fisherman who used to live nearby at Pungal Barakt Island. His former village has ceased to exist due to the development of the Selata Aerospace Park, building of bridges and roads in and out of the said island. The conditions of the fishing village may not be ideal for a city dweller due to the swampy lands are infested by mosquitoes at night and filled with garbage and stench of animal carcasses. Over time, this uninhabited Selata fishing village became a hub for fishermen, predominantly of Chinese and Malay descent, who utilized the quaint kampong-styled huts as their working base. These rustic wooden jetty, floating above the water or pitched on wooden stilts, served as storage for fishing gear, nets, and boat supplies. Although fishermen don't reside here, the allure of the rustic and rural huts serve as a resting place for the fishermen. Unofficially, each jetty has different nicknames such as Chinese jetty, Malay jetty, no-name jetty and genial jetty according to the ethnicity of the men that fish there. Today, fees are paid annually to SLA ensuring its sustainability and legality from the fishing activities here. This jetty remains a hub for around 70 to 80 traditional fishermen to gather, exchange stories, and sell their catches. Despite the rustic charm, this jetty isn't exactly a mere relic frozen in time. The Kampung spirit thrives here as boat owners, friends, and regular customers have exclusive access to this rare enclave against the backdrop of Singapore's hustle and bustle life. This jetty offers a refreshing escape, a place where it does not seem to fit into the trapping of modern Singapore. Today, we are in luck for freshly caught green mussels and giant hard clam shells. You can be assured that the flesh is very succulent and full of taste of sea when they are eaten on the same day. They are unlike those shell bought from fish market or supermarket which has been frozen after they were caught. Besides, we also managed to buy the biggest freshly caught local mud crab of the day which weighed around 1.1 kilograms. We can proclaim that its flesh are so juicy and full up to its shell. It's no doubt that it's so much better than we ate in any local seafood restaurant which serves imported crabs. The historical roots of the rustic Selata fishing jetty village can be traced back to a time before even Sir Stamford Raffles set foot in Singapore. In those early days, 
the native Orang Lort, Aboriginal coastal inhabitants dwelt in the mangrove areas at the mouth of the former Selatar River, which is now known as the Lower Selatar Reservoir. The specific community in Selatar was referred to as Orang Selatar. When Singapore was part of Malaya, the Orang Selatar freely roamed the Johor Straits between Selatar and southern coastal of Johor. However, after the Singapore's breakaway from Malaysia, then Sultan of Johor, Sultan Abu Bakar directed the relocation of the Orang Selatar to southern coastal of Johor. Up until 1987, the Orang Selatar who had taken up Malaysian citizenship were still unofficially granted unrestricted movement across the Johor Strait into Singapore territory. However, many Orang Selatar who was forced and exploited to smuggle illicit goods across the strait leading to the arrest of Orang Selatar by Singapore Authority for smuggling activities, they were no longer able to freely access Singapore waters thereafter. This bridge linking Selatar to Pungal Barak Island via Selatar North Link all the way to Pungal. When the tide is low, you can walk down to the beach and swamp area outside the jetty. If you're thinking to explore the area in low tide, remember to wear proper walking shoes while checking out the forest views of the nearby Pungal Barak Island. Recognized as the last fishing village in Singapore, Selatar's Aliu extends beyond its fishing heritage where Singapore local fishermen continue their century-old trade by the sea. Nature lovers have uncovered its best-kept secret consist of a beach and breakwater that offer perhaps the most picturesque sunset point in the city. A good time to catch the golden sunset is from 6.30pm till 7.30pm. The sunset at Selatar Fishing Village is a sight to behold as the sun dips below the horizon, casting a warm golden glow across the tranquil waters. It creates a picturesque scene that captivates many local nature lovers and cycling enthusiasts. The vibrant hues of orange, purple, and blue paint the sky, reflecting off the calm surface of the sea. Silhouettes of fishing boats and traditional stilt huts dot the shoreline, adding to the charm of the scenery. At the fishing village, the atmosphere becomes magical as the fading light dances upon the water's surface, creating an enchanting reflection that mirrors the sky above. The silhouettes of fishing boats docked by the boardwalk add to the picturesque scene, their outlines etched against the colorful backdrop of the setting sun. For many, watching the sunset at Selatar Fishing Village is not just about witnessing a natural phenomenon, it's also about experiencing a moment of serenity and connection with nature amidst the hustle and bustle of urban life. It's a time to pause, reflect, 
and appreciate the simple beauty that surrounds us.